1 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 1. Now the Spirit, capital S, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd anoint the messenger now as I attempt to bring your word. I pray you'd bless that holy word as it goes forth, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Of all the times that I've tried to get up and preach, I'm going to tell you this morning that I firmly feel like this is one of the most important messages that I'll ever preach to you. And the reason I do is because I am firmly convinced that what's happening right now, right before us, is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, and we're watching it as it accelerates into this one world religion and one world government that's prophesied in Revelation 13. This past week I happened to be listening to the radio, local religious radio station right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, when I could not believe what I was listening to. The song came on, and here are the words. Partial, not all of them, but here are the words. Here comes a Baptist, here comes a Jew, there goes a Mormon and a Muslim too. I see a Buddhist and a Hindu, I see a Catholic and I see you. We're all God's children. We're all God's children. Why can't we be one big happy family? You like the day and I like the night. He's into country and he isn't. There's folks on the left and on the far right, but that doesn't mean that we have to fight. We're all God's children. All God's children. Yea, we're all God's children. Why can't we be one big happy family? Now, if I'd heard that from a bunch of liberals, uh, you know, and some marching out here on the street or somewhere, uh, I could understand it in context, but that's not where it came from. It came from a religious radio station right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, that's been around for a long time. And I thought to myself, now, do you know what you're playing? The, whoever, whoever, is, whoever was there at the board uh, and played this thing, I, first thing I asked myself, do you know what you're playing? And then I listened to the words very carefully, and I got on the internet, and I traced it down, made sure that I got this right. And it is, we're all God's children lyrics. And this was played on a local religious uh, radio station right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Here's the bottom line. If the stations now, these religious radio stations, are going to start playing ecumenicism, one world religion, where we're all in it together, and Christ is no different from any of the rest of them, folks, we have arrived. We have arrived. We're here. We're here. We're at the moment where the great apostasy is going to manifest itself, and you're going to see it happen. You've already seen it in some churches. I've, pre I've preached to you before about the emerging church movement. I've told you about some of their theology. You know, this is nothing new with them. And I've told you before, there's ever kind of a Baptist under the, under the sun, and so I'm not up here this morning to propagate the Baptist church. But I am up here this morning to preach Christ and Him crucified. The Bible said there is one God and one meeting between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He is the foundation of the church of the living God. I want you to understand something, and I want you to understand it, please. The church of God is not a building. It's not a Baptist. It's not a movement. It's not, uh, it's not all these peripheral things out here that are associated with the church in one way. In other words, they couldn't exist if it were not for the church. It's not them. But the church of God is a body of born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what do you mean by that, preacher? I mean that if you are born of the Spirit of God, then you are a member of the church of the living God. That's fact. And the only one that has anything to do with your new birth that puts you into the the body of Christ is the Lord Jesus Christ. He builds His church. We don't do it. It's, his, it's in His hand. He builds it. And so therefore, nothing could be more uh, could be more clear in my mind as I look at this apostasy than to understand that that I don't care how many people in Knoxville. It doesn't matter to me if 99% 
of all the people that go to church every Sunday in this town, if they subscribe to this, if this is what they believe, friend, they're fake. Their church is fake and they're fake Christians. Now you say, well, that's mean, preacher. No, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Republican, Democrat had nothing to do with it. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Wake up! Wake up! They're playing this garbage on your local religious radio station. And they're trying by doing that to brainwash you and recruit you into the church of the Antichrist. And believe me, his churches are all over this town. And if you rebel against this, what I've said, and you do not, you say, well now preacher, I believe we ought to love one another. And this is, well the Bible said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If God didn't love mankind, I don't know what did, but Christ came into this world and the fact that he came brought judgment upon man. The simple fact that he was here, didn't have to say a word, the fact he was here was judgment on sinners because God sent his only begotten son. So I want you to understand today that what I'm going to preach is very important. It's very, very important. You are faced with a situation where you must make a choice today. Everybody in this auditorium, whoever's watching by the internet, who will watch this later, who will see this on television, who will hear this on a, on a CD, you must make a choice. You are either for Christ or you're against Him. You say, preacher, I want Christ and I want Buddha. No, you can't have both. You can't have both. There is one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is none other. There is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. He is Lord and beside him there is none other. The book of Revelation makes it very clear that Christ is the judge on the great white throne and he will judge all men by the word of the living God. Now here's their doctrine. When Christians ask if you believe you are a sinner respond with we have not perfectly realized our divine potential but are still in the process of unfolding it through meditation and higher states of consciousness boy if that's not religious mumbo jumbo I don't know what is but that's what you get out of people do you know why listen to them listen to their preachers look at their doctrine how many churches in this town are preaching the new birth anymore how many you know why they don't preach the new birth? Because when you start preaching the new birth, you're telling men they're sinners, and you're telling men that Christ is the only way that they can be born again. That's exactly what you're doing. So they refuse to preach the new birth. It's all about how you can better yourself, how you can have this relate. It's all superficial, surface relationships with God, but it could be Buddha, it could be Confucius, it could be a Hindu God, it could be Vishnu, Brahma, or 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 any of the gods of the Hindus. It could be any of them. And what you've done is put the Lord Jesus Christ on the same level as them. And it won't work. He will not be on the level with any of them. Kneel to your own self, they say. Honor and worship your own being. Chant the mantra always going on within you. Meditate on your own self. God dwells within you as you. You say, preacher, that's so wild and crazy. Nobody believes that in the church. You kidding? Are you serious? You're living in a make-believe world if you don't know that. These people believe they are the sum total of everything. This is why there's so much narcissism today. This is why there's so much about self today. It's all about me. That's what it's about today. That's why everybody today, my friend, is looking at themselves and the Savior is within them. Their salvation is them. They are it. And this is what you're getting. And the preachers feed that. The preachers feed it week in and week out. If you get a preacher that gets up in front of you 
And every last one of His messages is all about how God wants to bless you and how all you need to do is to understand the great potential that's within you and how God has all these things laid out for you and all you have to do is learn the secret and you can just tap into it and you'll be so wonderful. This is exactly what you're hearing and this is what's coming from the pulpits in America. And my friend, it is pure poison. I must add, listen to this. I look for inspirational messages from a variety of sources besides Jesus. Our folks get to hear words of wisdom from great prophets and spiritual leaders like Buddha, Muhammad, Yogananda, and the Dalai Lama. The only one that can do anything for me spiritually is the Lord Jesus Christ. I must add, though, that though I don't believe making disciples must equal making adherence to the Christian religion, it may be advisable in many, not all, circumstances to help people become followers of Jesus and remain within their Buddhist, Hindu, or Jewish context. A leader of the emerging church gives out his great wisdom. We need to become aware of the cosmic Christ, which means recognizing that every being has within it the light of Christ. Now here's what they say. Something very powerful is happening. It's emerging. We are witnessing a spiritual revolution of great magnitude in the whole world. The rise of a new school of mysticism within Christianity. It is growing year by year. I agree. There is a definite powerful move of the Spirit, but it's not the Holy Ghost. So here's what they do. They attack your Bible. Because if what they're preaching and what these religious stations are playing, if that's true, then this Bible is no more than just another religious book that can be interpreted any way you please. It's no longer the Word of God. The absolute Judge and God Almighty, He has revealed Himself in this book, and that's not so anymore. And then there's an attack on the Savior. If the Lord Jesus Christ is just one more Savior, He's just your faith tradition, if He's just part of the pantheon of gods, then the Lord Jesus Christ Himself was deluded when He was here 2,000 years ago and said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. That's what he said. Then there's an attack on the believer. If, they, if what these people say is true, then you as a believer, you've been deluded. You've been, you've been, you, you're, you're living in the mountains. You're living in the backwoods. You're living in the backwaters. You need to open your mind up and begin to receive the great spiritual truths of this generation. This is what they're telling you. This is what they're trying to feed into your mind. When you hear this garbage right here, here comes a Baptist. Here comes a Jew. There goes a Mormon and a Muslim too. I see a Buddhist and a Hindu. I see a Catholic and I see you. We're all God's children. Now we may have our squabbles between the Baptist and the Methodist and the Presbyterians and the Lutherans and the Charismatics and the Pentecostals. We've got our squabbles, my dear friends. And in these churches, I believe you're going to find born again believers scattered all over the place and make up the body of Christ. Yes! But my dear friend, a Buddhist and a Hindu and a Muslim has nothing in common with me. Whatsoever. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. Then there's the message. This message is a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's all about pride and narcissism. It's about self. If you go to church week after week after week, and you never come under conviction for the sins in your life, you never grow enough in the Scripture and the Holy Spirit to begin to realize that you need help. You need the blood of Christ. You need fellowship with God. And the only way to have that is to have a right understanding of who you are with God. But if you don't get that week after week after week, then you are in a narcissistic, self-loving, self-church. Then there's the man. The man. The man. You see, they attack the Bible. Then they attack... They attack the mess, then their message, and then there is the man. There is a Christ that is clearly set apart, a different Christ. I recommend, and I recommend this strongly, that you get my Sunday school lesson from this morning. 
I would, I, I recommend it. I recommend you get that Sunday school lesson and you listen to what I talked about in Sunday school today. Because what I talked about has a direct bearing on what I'm preaching to you this morning. There is a Christ that is not the true Christ. I want you to understand something. This Christ that is showing up in religion is an absolute, is a, is, is, is a, is a, is a, counterpart to the true Christ. That's what he is. You have the true Christ and you have a false Christ. And that's where we are right now. People can't tell the difference between the two. But this generation is fascinated with the spiritual things. Fascinated. You know why? Because there's a hunger inside every man for God. There's a hunger in his soul for somebody bigger than him. He knows he's got a problem. He knows he's got a sin problem. I don't care how much he tries to explain it away, how he tries to bury it, or how he tries to put it under a microscope and explain it scientifically. He's got a problem. And that problem is sin. And the only one that can do anything for you when it comes to sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only one. Nobody else can. But they are fascinated with the occult. Now why are they fascinated with the occult? As I said, because man has a desire in him for something spiritual. We live in a time of mad scientists. What's a mad scientist? A mad scientist is somebody who wants to find eternal life without the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Genesis, as I said in Sunday school this morning, the Lord God stopped them from eating of the tree of the fruit of, of life because He said, if you eat of this, you'll live forever and you'll live forever in a fallen state. And dear friend, you do not want to live forever. Would you want to live forever in the state you're in right now? Even being born again you still got that old man he's corrupt by nature that would be the worst curse to ever come down on your soul can you imagine burying all of your children burying their children burying their children burying their children and live on and live on and live on and live on and all that you would go through through e through ages on this earth and never die no when God gets ready to call me home, I'm ready to go home. When I finish my course, that's when I'm ready to go home. I've told the Lord time and time again, God, when you get ready for me, I'm ready to go home. When you are ready and I'm finished, I'm ready to leave this world. I do not want to live forever in this fallen body and this old man that constantly tries to drag me down. Thank God for eternal life through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For there's something inside me that is different from that old man that says to me, I know whom I have believed. I know where I'm going. I know I'll live forever. But not the way I am. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> There is a clear and total rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ and of God, the God of the Bible. Yes, sir. A clear and total rejection of the God of the Bible. I marvel at how people get out and they march, you know. I'm all for anybody demonstrating in this country. I'm the first one to preach freedom of speech. I am so anti-political correctness. It's not, I despise these people on these college campuses that have only one view. And you don't come on there. You're, you're a Nazi or any... You're, you're, they're going to brand you if you don't agree with them. That's garbage. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? And so they get out and they march and they demonstrate. Fine. Good for them. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If you are for killing babies, you have already lost me with your message. If you are a baby killer, I don't want to hear you talk about love. I don't want to hear you talk about sacrifice. I don't want to hear you talk about rights. I don't want to hear you talk about equality. If you are a baby killer, you have no idea what you're doing or what you're talking about. You've been brainwashed. Amen. You've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed. It's an awful thing. It's a terrible thing to live your life under condemnation. And some of you are living under condemnation. And Satan's going to beat you to death with your past or for some, some sin or whatever it is. He's going to beat you to death until you learn the secret of victory. Now what is the secret of victory? Christ is the secret 
God made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin. In plain words, He made Christ to be the sin of all mankind, every sin. The, he, is, he is the one who, when He went to the cross at Calvary, represented every single man. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. For He died in my place. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'd use what I've said this morning, Lord, for the glory of God. Bless the folk. Let your word take heart, take root. Lord, may they not forget this one point that I try to make to them now. That right now, already here in Knoxville, Tennessee, they are playing on the radio station, on the religious radio stations. They are playing the music and the lyrics to brainwash people into accepting the religion of the Antichrist. It's already here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.